You are listening to the Pot.Live podcast. I'm your host, Lenny G, and this podcast is going to teach you all about what's happening, what the trends are, the latest news, the thought leaders, the business leaders in the cannabis industry. As this industry moves forward at a rapid pace, everyone needs to adapt, everyone needs to change to what's going on, and we're gonna bring you those guests. What are they doing to make their business successful? What are they doing to get their product out there? How are they getting exposure? How are they dealing with all the changing laws? That's what Pot.Live is gonna be all about. And make sure you visit Pot.Live, download the app, go to the website, and you will see all of the digital media assets from articles, videos, podcasts, everything, the latest news and trends will all be at Pot.Live. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the show. Check out the new MJ.com. Connecting the culture, silencing the stigma. The only destination online where you can educate, locate, entertain, and shop. You have VIP memberships. You've got a full shop and marketplace. Industry Insider gives you all original content to our blog, all the best articles from thought leaders around the world. You've got medical information, the ability to get your medical marijuana card. You've got delivery. You've got all the digital media content you would need. You've got brand partners, business solutions, locate your dispensaries, find info on any strain you can imagine, play games with our 420 trivia game, download the free app, check out mj.com. Welcome to another episode of the Pot.Live podcast. I'm your host, Lenny G, and today we have the founder and CEO of Amor CBD, Mr. Ed Donnelly. Amor CBD's family of products are simply the best in the market today and a brand you can trust, according to their website. They only use the finest U.S. grown hemp and highest grade broad spectrum CBD oil available on the market today. Mr. Ed Donnelly, welcome to the show. Happy to be here, Lenny. Look forward to talking to you. Excellent, excellent. So why don't you tell us right off the bat, tell us what, um, and you know what, before you even start, I'm going to give you a plug. You guys were nice enough to send me a, a tube of your pain relief cream, and I did a leg workout yesterday, and or the two days ago, and yesterday I had the day after soreness in my calves, and before I went to bed, I put the cream all over my calves, and I woke up this morning, and the soreness was gone, so I don't know if I'm crazy, or that is some good stuff. Either way, it's a good plug for you, Ed, so welcome to the show. Thanks, Letty. And it's probably some combination of both, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So tell everybody yeah. a little bit about uh, the Amore product line and, and your company. Well, Lenny, uh, the scary thing is I'm a nurse from way back. So I have a little bit of a clinical acumen uh, and a sensitivity to patients. But the Amore brand, I spent 35 years with traditional big medical device companies. The last 20 was as a CEO of of various companies, and one of them was public. So I have big healthcare company experience. I've worked with the FDA that entire time. So we set out to do things right. Yes, we're USA grown. Yes, we're broad spectrum. We are zero THC, zero, not 0 0.3, 0, 0.0000. But we are FDA registered. We are the only, I repeat, the only CBD cream with lidocaine that took the time and spent the money to work with the FDA. So when someone buys our cream, they look at our tube and it says 200 milligrams of CBD. We tell people what's in it. But in the lower right-hand corner, it has an NDC number. It's a registered over-the-counter drug number with the FDA. This Wild West is, is out of control. We're doing everything with the FDA in anticipation of what the FDA will do. So we're proud of it. Our products work great. No THC. The, and you would have noticed last night when you used it, no odor. No odor. I was shocked. I was shocked. There was no odor at all. Zero. Zero. So you put, you know, CBD cream on and you think you're putting Vicks on your chest, uh, you know, other products. Ours, no odor. So no THC, no odor. And again, this FDA thing may not sound important, 
right at this minute, but it's going to be critically important. Look at what's happening out there with THC and people's concerns about it. We're zero THC and we're embracing the FDA and we're out in front of it. So really excited to be here. Well, thank you for sharing that. So why don't you tell, you know, our listener base is a bunch of beginners, people trying to educate themselves on the industry. We've got business owners. We've got other brands, obviously, listening, whatever it is. Why don't you tell the listeners who are trying to figure out what product they should get? First of all, why zero THC? How do you make it odor-free? How is your process for creating this product different than what they may see out there on the shelves? Excellent questions, Lenny. You know, our product, we've got We've got the cream, we've got tinctures, we've got soft gels, and we've got gummies. So whatever people want, they can get it from us. Where they can get it is Amour, A-M-O-U-R, AmourCBD.com. Uh, why zero THC? Well, I guess, how, how did this all start? My wife has chronic back issues. She fell. She got terribly hurt. Again, with my background in healthcare, I looked and I found CBD. It worked miraculously on her, but she wouldn't wear it outside because it smelled like Vicks and, and it had THC, which concerns us with medical testing. If she shows up positive for THC, she could uh, jeopardize our healthcare coverage. I live in Chicago. We see a woman on television lost her job as a bus driver because THC showed up. We went zero THC because we ultimately want to have the absolute best product. The odor, I knew that could go away just from my background. So the odor is driven by menthol. Menthol is a common active ingredient that people use in pain relieving uh, gels. But the best active ingredient, which is the most expensive, is lidocaine. That's the secret to the no odor. We use lidocaine and some wonderful creams, and we are odor-free. So the lidocaine is the most active, in, most effective active ingredient, the fastest penetrating, the deepest penetrating, and it's odor-free. So when I developed this for my wife, she could wear it out to dinner. She could wear it out socially. And then again, our commitment to testing. We do independent third-party testing, and it's driven toward confirming how much CBD we have, confirming the absence of THC, zero. I had a chemist, Lenny, tell me, you know, Ed, if you had 0.3% THC, it's cheaper. You can tell people it's zero. And again, with my background with the FDA, you know, I'm not going to tell people it's zero if it's 0.3. I want 0.0000. And that's why we're paying up for the best CBD oil possible. And, and it's funny you say that because I was poorly educated. When I think lidocaine, I think like Icy Hot or one of those products that smell and has a really pungent odor. And then I opened your coom to try it and I'm like, how the hell is lidocaine in here? It doesn't even smell. But I was unaware that it's really the menthol that makes the smell, not the lidocaine. Absolutely. It's, you know, think about it simply, which is the way I'm a simple guy. Two things, the active ingredient. So it's either menthol or lidocaine. They serve as the highway to deliver the CBD to the affected joint. Menthol smells, no two ways about it. The lidocaine does not. So our product, and thank you for you mentioning it, is absolutely odorless. Yeah. We have doctors, you know, I should tell you a story. We, we've been out seeing tons of doctors, people trying it like you, and they came back to me and they said, Ed, what you've developed here you know, I'd refer to it as a medical grade CBD. And that struck me because now we've got physicians acknowledging that our commitment to the FDA, our commitment to the lidocaine, our commitment to the best CBD, they called it medical grade, subject to their own definition. I don't know what it is, but we're simply the best. That's great. That's great. And I'm glad you're proud of it and, and you can really hear it in your voice. So that's cool. That's cool for you. So tell us about, you mentioned the different products you have in your product line. So far in your experience, I don't know how long you've actually been selling the products, but what has been the most popular, the least popular so far and uh, as far as selling for you? Well, as I said, we've got the creams, we've got the tinctures, we've got the gels and we've got the gummies. 
by far the cream is the most effective or the biggest seller so far. We've been selling approximately 90 days and it's doing exceptionally well. But that's probably because we took the approach and, and targeted the pain clinics and chiropractors and uh, people who are treating chronic pain conditions. We are make, gaining traction with our tinctures, with sleep clinics and people who uh, you know, are having difficulty sleep and, and anxiety. And then people are supplementing their daily use with the gummies or the pills. But by far, you know, the cream is, is the biggest seller, but that's a direct result of our emphasis and, uh, and really that's our signature product. And how are you getting the name out there? Obviously, there's a bunch of people that are, have similar businesses, maybe not as good as yours, Ed, of course, but how, do they, how are you getting the name out there for people to understand the brand and be able to trust the brand over time? Two-prong approach, Lenny. First is we're, we are working with some distributors, more on the, on the traditional medical side, for hospitals, nursing homes, chiropractors. We're working with some distributors and they're taking up the product, so they're putting it in their literature. But now we have uh, started a campaign, uh, really within the last 10 days, a public relations campaign to, uh, to launch the AmoreCBD.com website. And we're going to have exciting things to follow. But uh, I think AmoreCBD.com is going to be pre- the, the preferred destination for people looking for the absolute best CBD products. Great. And, and every entrepreneur, you know, you gave us some of your background. Everyone has some help along the way. So when you, start, when you got this idea and it hatched in your brain, I'm sure it didn't happen overnight. It took some time to get everything ready and the product ready and how you're going to launch it. Was there anybody that mentored you or helped you along the way? Well, I guess there's two things. I have a team of people who, who I'm working with, both investors and skilled professionals. And they're absolutely terrific. They have a lot of context. They have a lot of skill. And then the, the name Amor is special because I have a granddaughter who's nine years old and who had a heart transplant at two, two wow. years old, a heart transplant. And she's doing spectacular. That's great. But my world, I think about everything in terms of her and a heart. So when I went to name the product, Amor just seemed to fit. So everything that I do is dedicated to her and we're only doing it right. I'm so happy she's doing well. Thank you for sharing that, Ed. So tell us, you gave us a serious story right there along the way. Anything funny happened along the way where you're trying to create this product and something that you didn't expect happened and you had to adapt or pivot real quick? Gosh, um, you know, the odor, that's, a, that's an interesting question. Fortunately, uh, we haven't had any major setbacks because we, we were a year in development. Now, again, we, we got products along the way where people said they didn't have an odor, but there was an odor. So again, we went for the complete absence of odor. We had the THC things. We, we met some people along the way who, who were more snake oil salesmen. Uh, so we have ferreted all that out. And um, so now we, we have been deliberate, you know, it's been slow. And the FDA process is slow and it is expensive, uh, but that's our commitment. So no, uh, nothing drove off the rail except for, you know, maybe some of the snake oil people that I've met along the way who I wouldn't even buy from. Yeah. And that's a perfect segue for my next question. So, you know, the same people that were trying to sell me Bitcoin last year and that didn't work out are now trying to show me that they have a new CBD brand, right? How do you weed out for lack of a better term, how do you weed out those (laughs) snake oil people as opposed to the legit brands if you're a consumer? Well, I I think if you're looking at a cream with an active ingredient, you know, it has to be FDA registered. Pain, if someone says pain relieving cream, it must be uh, registered. You know, I I see one very popular one out there that calls themselves a muscle rub. You know, that's that's deceptive at best, I think. I think the THC, if it's got THC in it, I'd say stay away from it. U.S. grown uh, is an absolute mess because we test for not only what's in the product, the CBD and the no THC, but we test to find out what hopefully isn't in the products, metals and solvents. So, you know, 
I guess I go back to what, you know, my father said, if it, if it seemed too good to be true, it probably is. People need to do their homework. People need to, uh, you know, our FDA thing, that is a big, big deal. That's the good housekeeping seal of approval right there. And I think gives people an idea that, that we're in this for the long term and that uh, we can be trusted. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So tell me about your overall views on the cannabis industry in general. Um, obviously, it's becoming more mainstream, medically legal in, you know, 30 something states, recreational much less. What are your feelings just as a human being as far as the country being medically legal or recreationally legal or both? Well, my feelings as a human being goes back to a little bit of my nursing training. First of all, it works. It absolutely works. Tried it on my wife, it worked. You benefited from it last night. But even as I dug into the studies, 30 times more anti-inflammatory uh, relief than Tylenol and ibuprofen. So clinically, and, and I've even read some studies, and it's early on, uh, but I've read some studies where the clinical results are overwhelmingly positive. So the market is big. We can argue whether it's one billion now going to be two billion, going to be twenty five billion. It is big. I'm a huge supporter of uh, the medical market. I think I think it. Sh I welcome regulation. I'd even maybe go into the camp of it should be more regulated. That's good for society. It's good for people. They need to be able to trust things. So again, me having worked with the FDA forever, I welcome their their involvement. So I support it from a medical standpoint. People's lives are being positively changed, whether it's anxiety, our special war heroes with PTSD and things like that are absolutely being benefited from it. And so the medical market has my 100% approval. And I think the people who should judge whether it works are the people who are taking it because if it's helping them, thank God. Uh, the recreational market, I'm a 100% supporter of that as well, because people use various items in their life for uh, recreational relaxation or pleasure. You know, we have cigarettes that are uh, legal and regulated. We have alcohol that's legal and regulated. And I don't see this any differently. I think it should be legal and regulated and uh, and people should be allowed to uh, to get their pleasure and enjoyment in however they see fit. So I'm a huge supporter. We're, we're focused on the medical market now, but, but again, I'm a big fan of the regulation so that we can keep people safe. Every industry went through this, right? Uh, the early days of alcohol, you had moonshine that killed people. I hope we've learned from all those experiences and regulate this quick. Agreed, Ed. Agreed. So before we finish up, tell everybody what's one thing that excites you about the industry in general? And what's one thing that concerns you? Oh, God. What excites me is that it works. It's giving people comfort. That's what excites me. It's just, it's effective and it helps people. And again, we're, we're out to have the best product possible and it can be gotten at a more cbd.com. What scares me? is just the whole regulatory environment that the regulatory doesn't scare me. The lack of regulation scares me. Things, things being brought in. I've heard absolutely horror stories about people bringing stuff that they know is garbage. They're selling it. It's unhealthy. And their attitude is they'll have made so much money that when they are put out of business, they'll have still made a lot of money. And I just think, I, I just think that's awful. But I also trust human beings, and I think 80% of the people in this space are in it for the right reasons, and 20% are in it for the wrong reasons. And hopefully, a more will be a leader uh, that can set the tone. Excellent. Thank you, Ed. So everybody go visit amorecbd.com. That's A-M-O-U-R, cbd.com. And I love the tagline, show yourself some love. Ed Donnelly, thank you so much for being a guest on our show. Thank you, Lenny. A pleasure to meet you. Excellent, and we'll see everyone next time on the Pot.Live podcast. If you're listening to this podcast, that means you like digital media. 
And where is the home for all digital media content in the cannabis industry? It is pot.live. That's right, pot.live. That's where you'll find all of the podcasts that you like, just like the one you're listening to right now. All of the video content that you love and all of the written articles, trends, news, whatever you need, it's all right there. Entertaining and educational, the home of digital media content in the cannabis industry. Visit us at pot.live and download the free app at your Google Play Store and the Apple iTunes Store.